ideas that you cannot put into practice are just thoughts. Mm. You need to become a master of your craft before you can have brilliant stuff is going to happen to you. It's just that it's it's just the law of 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 life, and 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 being able to manage adversity is is at the end of the day, honestly, the number one driver of success in 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 business as as well as in in life. I'm Josh Golden, and this is Eureka, where we talk about big ideas and how they came to be. Today on the show, we have Antonio Lucio, who is the founder and principal at 5S Diversity, as well as the executive fellow at the Yale School of Management. Of course, you can neglect to mention, he was the CMO of Facebook, Visa, and HP, and the head of innovation for PepsiCo. So he certainly has had a very large history in marketing leadership. But most recently, he's been focusing on the future challenge of changing the face of leadership and marketing into the future and he started up an entire practice to make that happen. I cannot wait to hear about his big idea and how he made it happen. I want to thank Verizon Media for being a proud supporter of Eureka. As an incubator of innovation and next-gen content, Verizon Media's trusted media ecosystem of premium brands like Yahoo and TechCrunch help consumers, advertisers, and media partners stay informed, entertained, and connected. Antonio, thank you for joining me, sir. I'm very glad to be here. I'm having a cup of coffee just to match your level of energy. <laughs> I get it. You know what? I don't drink coffee. It's a thing. <laughs> just so you know. Thank God. It's, it's a thing. People get worried uh, with me and coffee. They're like, Josh, did you have coffee? I'm like, yes, I did. As a matter of fact, I'm like, you cannot do this meeting. Uh, uh, so I am so excited you're here. Thank you for joining me. My, my pleasure. This show uh, is all about listening to people and their inspiration and getting us into uh, the world of ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, but before I get us there, I have to start with just a few things to help me uh, ground us in some uh, idea uh, basics. For example, sir, where, where, where are you most creative? Is there, is there some time in your, in your daily life where you're like, you know what, I'm most creative when? Normally, I have to immerse myself in a topic. Mm. Normally, that topic is a topic that I am passionate about. And then I will have it ruminating in, in my head mm. for a while, and I would be working out and thoughts will mm. come out of it and then I will be walking and thoughts will come out of it and then I'm, uh, I'm, I'm watching a movie or reading a book and thoughts will come out of it. The moment that the idea is crystallized, I need to be alone in front of a piece of paper or in front of a, 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 a white computer sheet, if you, mm. if you will. That's the moment where everything comes together, that's where, I, I guess, where perspiration meets inspiration. <laughs> but it, I, I, I need th those three steps. I need the immersion, I mm. need the, the, the ruminating about it, and then, I, then, then when I sit down, it's when things begin to click. Interesting, does it come out as a complete thought, like a full song? But I don't know if, if the right analogy is is a full song, it starts with a first line mm. that becomes a first verse mm. that evolves into several verses and then it then it will then it will will finish but it is it is it is yes it is normally in one sitting but it is step by step it's not like I have this idea for the song and it just flows mm. it, I, I have to work with it at what point of your life you know, did you recognize that you were um, an idea person? Again, uh, I have this conversation with uh, with my daughters. I have this conversation with. And you have with, you have many daughters. I have five daughters. <laughs> yeah. so you have, you're uh, blessed with five daughters. I am blessed with with five daughters, um, which means that I'm learning all the time. <laughs> I've learned to listen. I've uh, they push me in in, in 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 very good ways into different thoughts and different ideas, which is. Is really amazing, um, but um, some of the conversations that I have with them and with with creative people and and business people in general, uh, I believe, or at least in my in my personal book, mm -hmm. that you need to become a master 
of your craft before you can have brilliant, brilliant ideas. Okay, interesting. Ideas that you cannot put into practice are just thoughts mm. to me. And, and, and the key in, in our world uh, is is having the ability to have a, an innovative thought and, and, and then put them into action. Mm. Tell me if there was a moment that inspired what in fact you've started to do, you know, to, to drive the change for diversity in particular. How did you arrive at this conclusion? It, it, the, the theme in me, it, m m meaning it, it, everything is an evolution based on knowledge, um, based on, on facts and based on, on experience. Um, the, the first sort of um, moment was uh, I developed my career within the international division of companies. Right. And when you're, when you're uh, Jonathan Mindenhall actually speaks about that as well. When you are growing up in, in, uh, in the international division of any of these big multinational uh, companies, everyone is diverse. Our issue of diversity at the time was not um, uh, 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 geographic or racial, or, or it, it, it had to do with men versus women. We did not have mm. enough women at the time. But you know, when you, when you grow up in an environment where everyone is different, and Amer even Americans have an accent, <laughs> Uh, th then, then, <coughs> then things become um, um, uh, more fluid and, right. and, and more, more natural. Uh, 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 conversations are significantly more intense because people are coming from different backgrounds, have different passions, have different life experiences, and 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 that becomes your 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 milieu. That becomes the the way in which you are developing uh, your career. The moment that I move from international divisions to, to manage the U.S., was um, a, a, which was at Pe PepsiCo Pepsi, yeah. at the time. I went from being the CMO of international into, into being the head of, of innovation and portfolio transformation. What was my first experience on the C-suite and all that. Pepsi was a very diverse company, a global company and all that. When you started going down into the U.S. division, that's when you go like, oh, oh, wow. And, 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 and you begin to listen to the topics of African Americans, of, of women, of, uh, of, of Hispanics, of LGBTQ, uh, people with disabilities, and you go like, wow, I didn't, I, I didn't understand that, they were, that this was such a major, a major issue. Um, so I had to learn the mm. US market, just like, like, like everybody else, and, and it, it it, um, it was at Visa when I, I became their first global CMO um, right before the company um, became publicly traded for, for the first time that I began to um, quietly first um, begin to make decisions based on ensuring that we have teams that are representatives of the communities Mm. of the communities that um, that we served um, again it was kind of natural for me because that's the way that I that I grew up professionally mm -hmm. um, when I when um, when I uh, joined HP um, as again the company split so I, I was once again the first CMO of the new mm -hmm. of the new company it was the opportunity to reframe everything that we were doing it became um, a mantra mm. we, we need to make sure that this is a business imperative um, i was um, privileged to to work for a company that believed in that it was a again when a new company is created from the split of an of an old company my boss uh, dion weisler uh, australian by mm -hmm. the way uh, had the opportunity to select to select his own board of directors so it was <laughs> Overnight, the most diverse board in the United States. Uh, you know, women, people of color, uh, people from international countries. Um, and then we started driving the, the diversity and inclusion agenda, not just within the company, which was m my first order of yeah. business. Sure. Before you ask others to diversify, before you begin to point fingers outside of what you can control, you should own what you own, 
and drive change mm. first. After we, we were able to, to do that within the marketing team, and it took me, it took me about two years to get to the level of the right, the right um, male, female representation, the right level of representation of people of color, people from international, mm -hmm. from international backgrounds. Um, then we decided to bring the network of agencies and the ecosystem together with mandates. Mm. But so e everything has been an, an evolution, and now where, where I am now, uh, where I'm devoting 100% of my time to um, marketing transformation through diversity and inclusion, ensuring that the next generation of senior marketing leaders are indeed a reflection of the, the, the communities uh, that we serve through capability, community, mentoring, sponsorship. Um, it was a very logical mm. evolution of that, um, that particular process. As, a, as you're, you were exiting Facebook, there, there was a reflection there? Right. Oh, was there before, a... before I exited uh, um, Facebook, several things happened. Um, we were in the middle of the, elec in, in the elections. The company was making uh, decisions regarding content. I was agreeing with some of those uh, decisions. I was not agreeing with some of, of, of those decisions. And believe it or not, uh, <laughs> regardless of what people say in, in the press, the level of intense ar uh, arguments, discussions, and 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 uh, 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 inside is 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 incredible, and it's not only allowed but it is really encouraged. At the end of the day, yes, someone is going to make a decision, and right. but opinions are heard on the on all the, on all the on all the spectrum. So I was kind of uncomfortable there, and mm. then what happened afterwards was that after the election or after no no af after all this. Um, uh, decisions on content from Facebook sure. and all that. Then the brands, my my people, my <laughs> CMO people, my agency people began to talk. Black Lives Matters, black postings on the internet. Let's do a little boycott here, a little boycott there. Let's do this because these people need to do that. These other people need to do that. And this other association needs to do that. It's almost activism sure. as opposed to true um, uh, uh, change management, mm -hmm. and I've been in this industry for 40 years. I knew the people, the companies, the agencies, the networks that were making the statements about how other people <laughs> need to do business, and they were not looking Inward. at themselves. Right. You know, many, many, many brands that have been receiving awards on the quality of their advertising do not have diverse C-suite, do not have diverse boards. Um, uh, they, they don't even have represent, enough representation of women, let alone mm. people, people of, uh, of, of color. Yeah. And yet we're here making, making a statement that everybody likes to talk and mm -hmm. everybody likes to, to post and everybody likes to do communication stuff. It's almost like as an industry, we're more activists than change management because we like the shock value, we like mm. the bold move, we like the PR value, we like the awards that we're going to get at can. This is not going to change through stunts. Mm. This change through holistic and systemic change, and it 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 requires everyone, everyone to do their part, and we just need to begin to act a lot more. So since I was pissed at Facebook, I was pissed at our industry, I had to look at the mirror. Why am I so freaking uncomfortable? Why am I pissed at my friends? Why am I pissed at my boss? Right. I was uncomfortable with myself. It's mm -hmm. like, oh, I'm criticizing him and this company. I'm criticizing my industry. What am I doing? Mm. So that is I mean, obviously, maybe I'll just ask one question, and you can you can you can media train me around it. Uh, but um, was there a particular conversation that you had at Facebook that was the swift kick in the ass? That was no. the nothing. It was just the the, the overarching. It's, it, the, 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 you know, as communication people, we like that dramatic moment. Aha! <laughs> I just came out of the. I had an idea. Let's do it. At least in my case, it's never been that way. It's a lot 
of hard work. And I'm, 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 um, I, I like to reflect a lot. I, I come from a, a, um, an in intellectual tradition that there is no such thing as faith without doubt, including faith in yourself, mm. including faith in what you believe. So for me, when I'm having these types of thoughts, I, I like to sit with them and I like to push them to the extremes. Mm. I like to even contradict myself within so that, um, so that I can end up in a, in, in a moment where I go like, yeah. So it, it's, never, it's never one act, it's ne in my case, it's never one conversation. It's an accumulation of, uh, of actions, of thoughts, of reflections that then leads into a, a, new, way of, uh, a new way of thinking. Yeah, I've had so many conversations with people about their, their moments of, of inspiration. And realistically, they're, they're, more, um, they're more a series of events that led to a conclusive outcome. But your particular story started back way back when you were working at PepsiCo and then continued to evolve and you, you, you were basically running a, a side hustle <laughs> that you were always thinking about how do I have a diverse focus? How do I create excitement and energy around people of different kinds of, th of thinking? And seeing the change that needed to happen, you went all in. You pushed all in on this topic. Yeah, and again, it, I, I, was, uh, I was just having a, a conversation earlier today with a uh, newly, newly appointed CMO. And he, he was asking the question, diversity, and I said, I told him, your first responsibility is to be really, really good at your job as a marketer. Diversity and inclusion is a how, is not a what. You need to earn your seat at the table. You need to put points on the board. If you don't have that power, nothing that you can do on the diversity front is going to mean a thing. You need to have the um, um, credibility to then be able to say, okay, I'm going to drive this the way that I need to drive that. And, 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 and that's really, really, we cannot get distracted that this is a business imperative. As, as because it is a business imperative, our responsibility is to build the business. We're just going to build it differently. Mm -hmm. But this is not an end in itself. This is a how. It is the most important how because it's a business, uh, a business imperative. So getting good at your job is, is really important. Because if you end up being like, oh, it's Mr. Diversity, but he didn't drive the business, <laughs> right. you know what's going to happen. Right, right, right. 22 months. You, you, it's 22 months. And by the way, you're going you're gonna to take the diversity um, um, uh, agenda backwards, mm. which is what happens with all diverse people, female and all that. Oh, we had the, we had the diverse person <laughs> on the job. Look what happened. Is that your American accent? No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I have accents of all sorts and form. I'm, I'm just an accent, period. <laughs> <laughs> How does a marketer balance the, the imperatives that they're trying to operate within. There's a lot of different stuff coming out that they have technology, they have data, the, the deeper deprecation of the cookie, they have the, you know, how, how will I reach my audience? How will I, you know, what, what matters to do, you know, all the things that come, and then this, another layer of actually, philosophically, I have a problem with the who is in the company doing the work. And I don't know how, maybe you can share this wisdom, how are you, how do you guide CMOs on that path? Number one, you have to embrace conflict. And I've talked about this many times. So all the research that has been done on this, they tell you diverse teams outperforms homogeneous teams in complex, complex tasks. Okay, interesting. In complex, it, 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 simple task, no. Complex tasks, those that required significant innovation, blah, 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 diverse teams do. Everybody, oh, yeah, yeah, great. What they don't tell you is that while they're completing this task, the homogeneous team is having a great time. Kumbaya, they sing the same songs, they name their kids the same, 
uh, they, they all have dogs. Uh, <laughs> the other, the, the other, the other team is is having a very hard time. They're arguing. They're it's 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 a struggle. They only realize at the end when you actually see results that that was actually the right way of dealing with things. So mm -hmm. the whole notion of embracing em, embracing conflict is 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 really important. And then there there is this whole notion that in order to develop uh, diverse talent, you need to ensure that they receive the same thing that everyone that has been successful in life has received. And, th and is that, that is quantifiable? Yeah. Th that is. Every successful person that I know, white, black, Hispanic, LGBTQ, disability, or, or female, male, they had stretch assignments. Mm. They were given opportunities that they didn't know whether they were going to be successful or not, but right. someone trusted their potential as opposed to their, 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 their actual resume. Uh, uh, women and people of color don't have that as much. Mm. Um, then you need a sense of community. You, you need to be able to have um, safe spaces where you can share what you're feeling mm. uh, with with other like like like-minded people. You need mentors, uh, and I I'm, I separate mentors from sponsors. Mentors are people that are going to guide you beyond your current company. These are the people that are going to tell you, you know what, you need to get the hell out <laughs> of that place. <laughs> it's wrong. It's wrong for it's wrong for you. And 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 by the way, you're not going to be able to make head waves given X, Y, and Z. Um, so you need you need mentors um, uh, and, and and people that are going to be there to to listen to you to 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 become sounding boards on important moments in your life, whether it is professional or personal. So the mentor is external, the sponsor is internal. To me, the sponsor is internal, which is the is the person that is going to give you the stretch assignment. Is the person that is going to root for you, and mm. you know. Um, I have seen throughout my career that if uh, if you're a white guy from one of the uh, Ivy League schools, these four things are built from the moment that you're born. You have them. The, 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 all the, all the, those pieces. The, 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 the capabilities because you've gone to the right schools, the community, right. the, the the mentoring, right. and, and, the and, the, and the sponsoring. It, it's um, for for the for the rest of of us folks. Um, you have to first. You need to have an awareness that that is needed, right. and then you need to build it so that um, so that um, so that people can succeed within uh, within the within the business world. Hi there. I'm with Yvonne Markman, the Chief Business Officer for Verizon Media. Yvonne. Thank you so much for joining me today, sir. Hey, Josh. Good to see you, and thank you for having me. A hundred percent. I am curious, Yvonne, can you share with me a personal story, an inspiration story, some, maybe a moment of eureka that you had in, your, in, in some part of your life that, that changed you? Yeah, I would say it was more of a eureka period that was my sports life during high school and college. So first I played rugby, and then I played soccer or football, as we say in Argentina, uh, and in both of these sports, I was the least advantaged or most disadvantaged player. So in rugby, I was the shortest and lightest weight hooker. And in soccer, I was the shortest goalie or goalkeeper in the whole league. You can't be vertically challenged in a, in a, in a goalie. That's a, tough, that's a tough spot. How did you overcome that challenge? Yeah, and I, I would say I, I was both vertically and gravity challenged because you know, I was short and lightweight. Um, I would say that what this did for me is it probably taught me or changed me in two ways. The first thing is it brought this level of energy to really try to overcome my weakness and, and a drive to be a lot better constantly. And then the second one, it taught me how to partner in very unique ways with my team, right? And, and really understand how to rely on them. Uh, around my weaknesses and, and how to drive some of my strengths into making the team better. And I would say 
it not only changed my sports life, it changed my college life at that point in time. It changed how I approach life in business and also, quite frankly, life with family and with friends and something that I still carry, you know, those two things that that drive to always be better as well as that team and, and partnership orientation. Yvonne, thank you so much for sharing that story. That was just terrific. Thanks, Josh. Thanks for having me and for uh, letting me share. Really appreciate it. I, I have a, a round of, of quick fire answers. Go for it. So these are rapid fire. We do have a, uh, there's a sound we're gonna drop in, something like a ding when you get it right. I, there's no wrong, there's no right answers. What is the most you've ever gambled and what's your game when you gamble? I think people like you and I put ourselves, place sometimes with such high stakes that that's gamble enough. <laughs> when, I, when I want to relax, I don't, I don't gamble. The... I, just, I just watched Friends with my daughters because they're reruns and I know exactly what's going to happen <laughs> and I don't need to apply any thought uh, uh, of it, so no, I, I don't, I don't, I don't like to gamble at all. Why do people? This is not. This is this is. Uh, why do people call you Yoda? Oh wow! Um, because I tend to share the the mistakes that I've made, <laughs> <laughs> and that and that and that 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 is that is called wisdom for some people. Um, uh, to me, wisdom is. Um, having the ability to make all sorts of mistakes and live to tell the story about it. Yeah, and you are not unwilling to share that, which is, that's awesome. Um, do you ever feel uh, insecure all or uncertain? Time. All the time. Is it a, is it a constant state of? It, it's a matter of grades, meaning I feel significantly more comfortable with myself, who I am, the things that I'm good at, the things that I'm not good at, than when I was um, uh, much, much younger, but I, the whole notion of, uh, it, it, let me put it to you this way. If I am not nervous prior to a presentation, if I am not uh, nervous prior to doing something, something new, something is gonna go wrong. <laughs> I go back to that statement. Um, in my book, there is no faith without doubt. So I will doubt myself, mm -hmm. I would doubt. And, and it's, part of, it, 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 it's part of my mental process, which is I, I the moment that I have things figured out, I, I, I no longer feel comfortable. Mm. When you're at a cocktail party, how do you glide into the action? What's your move? It depends on the type of cocktail parties. Okay, so if, if, uh, if you're if you're if you're in, in a business in business co cocktail party, if you're in a business cocktail party and you're the senior element, I go for high impact so I can disappear <laughs> through the side. Antonio was there. Oh, we oh, saw him. Yes, he we was saw there. him. Hi, he said hi to everybody. <laughs> he said a couple of words Out. and left. Um, if it's a if it's a if it's a, a social event where where people that I like, you know, which seems to, to I mean, sometimes they're not mutually exclusive. I actually like a lot of people in the industry, but you know, it's the you know, it's, if it's a business event, it's I, at this moment I like close knit, intimate type of conversation. That's what nourishes me. I love that. Last one. What's your biggest habit that you feel have made you, has made you the most successful? Ah, uh, resilience, man. Bouncing. Re bouncing back. It's like, uh, yeah, that, that's This is it the is. thing that I tell my children uh, and my wife and I have sort of espoused that being happy is awesome, but being resilient, that is the goal of parenting, helping a child to be able to bounce. Stuff is going to happen to you. It's just, the, it's, it's just the law of, of, of life. And, 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 and being able to manage adversity is, is, at the end of the day, honestly, the number one driver of success in, in, in business as, as well as in, in life, at least in, in, in my book. Mm. Antonio, this was such a great conversation. I cannot thank you enough for coming on the show and talking about what you're doing and, and giving us the kind of Yoda level insight that uh, <laughs> that uh, that only you could provide. Thank anyway, a pleasure. Uh, so so nice to, uh, you know, it, it, it makes such a difference when you're doing it with someone you like. <laughs> well, than thank when, you, sir. when 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 then when the interviews are you know, the, <laughs> there's my voice again. Uh, anyway, I I am really grateful for for the opportunity. I'm glad that we did this, and hopefully we'll we'll have the opportunity to talk more about this without the cameras. And that's always always nice, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Again, appreciate it.